So you're looking for a mobile CAD or content creation laptop with a budget of around two and a half thousand pounds. Well, there's so many options. So what do you buy? Well, today I have the brand new Dell Precision 3591, which is Dell's entry level 15.6 inch mobile workstation. And I'm going to do a full review covering the topics on screen now, which includes how it performs in benchmarks as well as gaming and answer whether you should avoid it, shortlist it or go ahead and buy it. Now let's begin with the unboxing. In the box you get a 130 watt power adapter and also the UK power lead. And up here we have the laptop itself inside a fabric sleeve. If we lift the laptop up we have some manuals underneath. Slipping off the fabric cover you have the usual Dell logo and it's got a silvery grey finish. There is a shimmer in the light and it does look premium. Opening up the laptop you have the same silvery finish on the inside but it's broken up by the keyboard which is finished in a matte black or dark grey colour. Now, I have had other precisions before, namely the higher-end 5000 and 7000 series, and the quality is a lot better. They're also made from aluminium. This is plastic, and I'm fairly sure it's based on the Latitude 5540, which I have here. As you can see, it looks exactly the same. This precision laptop is £1,300 more expensive, so I would have liked to see a slight difference. Maybe some carbon like the precision 5570. The full specification of the laptop in today's review is on screen now. The display on this review model is a 15.6 inch full HD with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 at 60 Hertz. It has a 250 nit brightness level, which in today's standard is not very bright, but I've used it in a well-lit office and it's completely fine. There is a small bezel running around the sides and at the top and bottom having a larger bezel housing the camera and the Dell logo. The screen goes all the way back and flat, giving you a 180 degree viewing angle. Unfortunately, you can't lift it with one finger. You can select from many variations of screen types, including a touch, but the resolution does not go any higher than HD. The only thing I will say here is ensure you buy the model with the IR camera which allows you to use Windows Hello to log in. This model has the Intel Core Ultra 7 165H V Pro Enterprise. It's got 24 megabytes of cache, 16 cores, 22 threads, and it runs up to 5 gigahertz, whilst only sipping 45 watts of power. There are other options, but stick with the Ultra 7 for performance and budget. This model here has a 32 gigabyte of DDR5 memory, running at 5600 megahertz and you can select from as little as 8 gigabytes up to 64 gigabytes generally speaking for 4k video editing in adobe premiere or photoshop and lightroom you need around 16 gigabytes but if your budget allows 32 gigabytes is a good mix of performance versus price if you do intend to upgrade then ensure that you have one 32 gigabyte module rather than two 16s otherwise you will spend more in the long run. You can select from a 256 gigabyte M2 NVMe SSD up to two terabytes. I would select the 512 gigabyte option to keep the cost low and add one terabyte as an additional drive. If you are confident enough, you could buy this independently and add it in yourself as Dell's £240 ask is outrageous. These only cost £70 on Amazon. I'll put some links in the description of NVMEs that are compatible. I'll also cover the upgradability later and show you exactly how to put a new hard drive in yourself. It comes with an Intel Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3 wireless adapter. Finally, I would select this £7 option with the fingerprint reader. Now onto the GPU, which is one of the main components to tackle 3D modeling or editing tasks. This model comes with the NVIDIA RTX 1000 ADA. This has six gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. You do have other less expensive options or the more expensive RTX 2000 with eight gigabytes of GDDR6. Again, selecting that 140 pound option will still bring the laptop under that two and a half thousand pound mark. I'll run through some benchmark tests after seeing how it copes with gaming. The first game is Cyberpunk. The settings are set to low and we are hitting lows of 42 FPS and highs of 53 FPS. The graphics look great. The game is smooth even during shootouts. GPU usage is hitting 99% and temperatures of 67 degrees. Unfortunately, GPU memory usage is not showing. CPU utilization is hitting highs of 50%. The fan is in overdrive though, trying to cool the laptop down. The keyboard area is very warm, so you might want to consider getting an external keyboard and mouse if you're gaming. Moving on to the next game, Red Dead Redemption 2. Settings are set to low, visuals look great. Although the scene is dark, the blades of grass look very realistic. We are getting up to 57 FPS, 
and lows of 44. With a bit of action, we are getting lows of 38. And please do not ask what's going on here because I'm unsure myself. GPU utilization is jumping between 65 and 80%, so there is a bit more room to notch up those settings. CPU usage has not exceeded 50% and temps are hit in highs of 70 degrees. I am happy with the performance of the GPU with both these games, proving the professional GPUs can run modern games so it can give you an escape from working. Here are the benchmark results and it's got some impressive scores, especially with the multi-core processing in Cinebench and Geekbench. The battery in this review model is a four cell 64 watt hour. I ran a battery benchmark using PC Mark 10 and we got eight hours and 50 minutes running the modern office benchmark which measures battery life with a balance of typing, browsing and video conferencing. For an extra £40, you can upgrade to a 6 cell 97 watt hour battery, which is worth considering as it will still be under £2,500 budget with all the other options. This laptop has a starting weight of 1.79 kilograms, or just under £4. The laptop I have here with the RTX 1000 ADA weighs in at just over 2 kilograms, or £4.4. With the addition of the power adapter and cable, its total weight is 2.43 kilograms or 5.36 pounds. So it's not very heavy given that it's got a dedicated GPU and carrying it in a laptop bag, you'll hardly ever notice it. Starting from the right side of the laptop and on the left, we have a micro SD card reader, a universal audio jack, two 3.2 Gen 1 USB ports, a HDMI 2.1 port, an RJ45 network port and a lock slot. On the left hand side of the laptop, we have two Thunderbolt 4 Type-C ports and a SC reader which is optional and on the back we have an optional SIM card slot. It has a standard backlit keyboard with a number pad. It does feel nice and comfortable similar to the other precision models I've reviewed. It's got a matte texture to the keys and has a small amount of travel. It has a large touchpad which is good if you're editing whilst traveling or limited with space. The touchpad is multi-gesture and has a silent click. It's got a full HD 1080p camera with a privacy shutter. This particular model does not have the IR camera, so make sure you get that as an option, which only costs £7. Here is how the camera looks within the camera app. The built-in speakers are loud and clear, and can be used to watch movies or play games as I demonstrated earlier. It just lacks some bass. The 5000 and 7000 series positions offer a much better experience. I'll play some royalty-free music at 50%. and now 100%. As I've stated several times before, the IR camera and express signing is a must-have, so ensure you don't cheap out and select that option. For those who are not familiar with it, it logs you into your laptop using Windows Hello and is secure. It has other great features such as locking if you walk away from your laptop and also dimming if you look away, which saves battery life. The fingerprint reader, which can be used to log in, is only a £14 option, so get it. As I promised earlier, I will show you how to upgrade this yourself. The first important thing you need to do is discharge any static build-up and the easiest way to do this is to touch something metal, for example a PC case. I have been doing that for over 10 years and never broken anything. The next important step is to grab a screwdriver set with many types of bits like this one. A link is in the description. It's only £8.50, but it will ensure you don't round screws off, which can be easily done. The next step is to select the correct screw for the job. To do this, simply grab the screwdriver bit and place it on the screw. What you want to do is check for movement when the bit is on the head and gently move it side to side. It should fit in snug and have no or very little movement. Once you are happy here, just unscrew the eight screws. These screws will not come all the way out, so you don't have to worry about losing them. Now the next step is to get a prying tool. The set I linked has some, and gently pry the back corner and work your way around the laptop. In some cases, you may need to leave a pry tool in one corner as you go around the laptop. When you are prying, just gently twist and the case will pop out and separate. Once the lid is off, that is a difficult bit done. Now here we have DIMM 1, which in my case is 132GB memory stick, and this is DIMM 2, so I can upgrade this to 64GB 
by buying another 32 gigabyte module. Bear in mind with Dell, it's best to buy the same brand as what's currently in there, as I have in the past purchased different brands and the laptop doesn't boot up. Next, we have the primary hard drive, which is a standard size NVMe. I would recommend buying the lowest gigabyte NVMe here to keep costs down. You want a minimum of 256 gigabyte. Now here we have is a secondary NVMe slot. This one has a heat sink on it. Now we simply need to unscrew the two screws to take off the heat sink. Word of caution here, the screw bit you use for the outside does not necessarily mean it's going to work for this. So it's important to select the correct screw bit like we did earlier. Now I am assuming you purchase an NVMe. Simply unscrew the two screws and gently pull the heatsink off. Get your new NVMe out and hold it on the sides and angle it into the slot ensuring the notch lines up. You can then pop the heatsink on the top and screw it down with the screws. Once it's in place, put the final screw in. It's as simple as that. In the future, if you want to upgrade the memory, it's simple to remove. Just gently move the metal holders. The memory will pop out where you can remove it. When installing, simply line up at an angle and push it back. The clips will spring back in and hold the memory down once you've pushed it back enough. You also have this two and a half inch hard drive slot here. This base model is under 2,300 pounds, but if you wanted to select the RTX 2000 ADA, which is a 141 pound option and select the 97 watt hour battery, it will still bring you under that two and a half thousand pound budget. But just bear in mind the weight will increase. Over on the Dell USA website, the same spec laptop is coming in at $2,864 with a three year pro support. There is not a three year basic warranty like we have in the UK. You can reduce this to one year and save $200. So what's the final verdict? Should you avoid it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you go ahead and buy it? I would buy it. I am using a five year old laptop to do all my 4K editing and also to do all my YouTube thumbnails in Photoshop and it meets all my needs. This laptop with its more modern processor and GPU and faster memory is much more powerful so I don't doubt it will last 5 years for you. Yes you are limited with the display resolution of 1920 by 1080 but if you use the WD22 TB4 dock like I have here, you can connect up to 4 screens at 4K resolution. I am demonstrating 2 Dell 1440p screens here and it will make you much more productive than working from the laptop screen itself. The laptop is more catered for 3D modeling, design and animation which a majority will buy this laptop for. So why not choose a MacBook? Well a Mac would easily do the video editing side of things but when it comes to specific application it just doesn't have the ISV independent software vendor certification that the precision range has. In simple terms most of the 3D modeling packages will not work and they're designed to run reliably with the precision range. The other key factor is that you can upgrade and add more memory or put larger disks in this. You cannot upgrade a Mac with Dell's 3 year warranty. This also gives you the confidence that it will last for years to come. £2,500, yes it's a lot to pay but it's worth it in the long run. If you are on the lower budget then consider the Dell Latitude 5540 which is essentially the same laptop, but it doesn't have the dedicated GPU or the high-end processor options. You could pick this up for £900 and it will easily do 4K editing and allow you to use Photoshop comfortably. Check that review out over here next. Or alternatively, watch a review of my budget Dell Precision 3541, which will only cost you between £350 and 400 pounds if you want to watch that video then click here next i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give it a like i hope i have answered all your questions if i haven't please leave a comment down below and for any tech related videos please consider subscribing thank you for watching